Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own spinner GUI that you can link to other scripts and stuff using findable events. So let's get straight into it. Alright, so before you do this, you want to make sure you'll know a little bit about scripting and stuff such as like tables and how to make a GUI and like events and stuff. So you should probably go brush up on those subjects before you continue. So once you're ready, uh, you're just going to want to make a new like screen GUI and you're just going to call this spinner. And uh, I'm just going to add like a text label here, I'm going to drag it to the middle. And I'm also going to add a button, a text button. I'm going to put it at the bottom here. Alright, so call it something nice like a uh, spinner text and like spinner button. Alright, so now I'm going to add a new local script. And uh, I'm going to do all the stuff on the client since this is only for GUI. I'm also going to go and replicate the storage and add a bindable event so I can like uh, connect it to other scripts. So we're just going to call that like spinner event. All right, so we'll go in our local script and we'll just define some variables first. So we're going to call this text to the spinner text GUI object, and we also have our button, which is the spinner button. We also want our spinner event, which is inside replicated storage. So to do that, you're going to type in game colon get service, replicated storage, and you have to wait for child spinner event. If you don't wait, then it'll just error. Okay, so after you've done that, you're going to actually want to add another variable called wait time. And I find that 0.1 works well, but like if you want to set this uh, higher, it'll like go slower. And if you set this lower, it'll go faster for the spinner so I recommend 0.1 it's like an okay speed you don't really have to change it alright now we get here to the stuff that you should change so first is the objects now this objects variable uh, just holds like the different strings that you want to have appear in the spinner so example let's say I have I have like uh, different colors it could be orange red yellow blue Let's add like, let's add purple to there as well. And uh, you can just set this to any table. So whether that be in a module script or the global array, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be a table with some strings in it, at least one string in it. So, yes. Now another variable you can make is spin count, which is how many times it spins. 50 works well for me, but I never tried any others. So yeah. All right. So now we get on to our code. So first, I'm going to make a new variable called start, and this will be just a random number between one and the number of objects. So this will put it at like a random number from the first element to the last element. So like the index of the element, so that we can like start at a random place. All right. So now uh, I'm going to bind my button's mouse button one click to a function. Uh, you don't need to pass in any arguments. And uh, basically, um, to do the spinner effect, I'm going to make a new for loop. I'm going to set i to uh, spin count, which is the number of times you want it to spin, because each time it loops again. Uh, we're going to want to go to zero, and we're going to minus one each time. So this will go from the number of spins, in this case 50, and each iteration it'll go down. So Initially, I will be 50, and then 49, and 48, and 47, all the way down to zero. So after you've done that, um, you're gonna you're gonna want to make a function. Uh, you can call it anything. I'm gonna call it something like uh, next object, and this is just gonna make it uh, easier for me to like iterate over the table and just go in the loop. So next object will basically return the next object in the list, which is pretty self-explanatory. So to code that, you're going to first want to do a if statement, and this will check if the current element, current index is like at the end of the list. We don't, we can't go past the last element or else it will return nil, so we're going to want to go back to the start. So we're going to do if start equals the number of objects, then we're just going to set start equals to one. Um, else we're just going to set start and then we're going to add one to start okay sorry about that I meant to add it inside the next object function um, so yeah 
So you're going to want to put this if statement inside the next object function. And a uh, cool thing about Roblox's Lua U is that you can do the plus equals assignment, which is pretty cool. Saves a bit of typing. All right, after you do that, you're just you're just going to return the objects. You're just going to return the object. So we're just going to return the object start. So basically, what this function is doing is it's setting start to like the next element in the list. So if start is currently one, it points to this orange. Um, but uh, when you run next object, it increases start, so it will point to red, and then it'll just return the object at that index. So if start is two, then we're going to return red. So basically, that's pretty easy to do. So now you're going to want to set your spinner text GUI objects text to the what to what the function returns. So I'm just going to do that. Text dot text is equal to next object, and uh, after you do that. I'm going to add an if statement and this part is to like slow down the spinner when it gets to the end. If you don't want this, you can just completely om omit it. So I'm just going to do if i is less than or equal to 10, then wait time plus equals 0.1. So each so once it gets down to 10, um, it'll increase the wait time by 0.1 seconds each time so that it appears like the spinner is like slowing down at the end. So now we'll just wait for the wait time. And after that's finished, once the looping is finished and you've got your object, you can just um, you can just uh, go to your you can just go to your spinner event and just fire it with the text. So this will return a string object. Um, this will return a string object, so uh, you have to handle it because it is a string object. It doesn't point to like a instance, it points to a string. So this is the finished code and I'm going to test it for any errors first. So let's go. And before I do that, let me change the text of this button. Spin. Alright, and I'm going to scale the text on them as well. Alright, so I'm going to click this button. And you can see it's spinning. And eventually, after 50 spins, you can see that it slows down, and we'll get uh, purple. So basically, that's that. Um, it's very extendable since this connects to a bind to a bindable event in replicated storage. You could change this to a remote event if you wanted to. So basically, when the spinner finishes, you can connect it to another script that can do all of your logic that you want it. Um, uh, I'll put this code on my website, thisnewplays.github.io. Um, Alright, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, bye, guys.